CDL practice test, Texas, Ed Break, Part 5. Question number 109. If application pressure must be increased to maintain a certain speed while going down a steep grade, then this most likely means what? A. There are other mechanical problems. B. The brakes are out of adjustment. C. There is an air leak. D. The brakes are fading. The correct answer is here. D. The brakes are fading. Explanation. When application pressure must be increased to maintain a consistent speed, it most likely means the brakes are fading the driver should slow down and use a lower gear. Question number 110. Some vehicles have a modulating control valve. What does a modulating control valve do? A. It enables you to switch from the air braking system to the spring brake system. B. It enables you to increase or decrease the pressure of the air brakes. C. It enables you to gradually decrease the pressure being sent to the trailer brakes. D. It enables you to put on the spring brakes gradually. The correct answer is here. D. It enables you to put on the spring brakes gradually. Explanation. The modulating control valve is a control handle on the dashboard that enables you to gradually apply the spring brakes. The more you turn the valve, the harder the brakes are applied. Question number 111. How can you tell if your vehicle is equipped with an anti-lock braking system? Abs. A. Abs is still optional. B. Check if the vehicle was manufactured after 2010. C. Check if the vehicle was manufactured after 2000. D. Check if the vehicle was manufactured after 1998. The correct answer is here. D. Check if the vehicle was manufactured after 1998. Explanation. Vehicles manufactured after 1998 are required to have anti-lock brakes. They also have a yellow abs malfunction lamp. Question number 112. With the engine at operating RPM. Air tank pressure in a dual system should build from 85C to 100C within how much time? A. 60 seconds. B. 30 seconds. C. 90 seconds. D. 45 seconds. The correct answer is here. D. 45 seconds. Explanation. In a vehicle with standard air tanks, the time it takes to increase from 85C to 100C should be about 45 seconds. If the pressure does not build fast enough, the pressure may become too low while driving, which can be dangerous. Question number 113. What is the best way to test your vehicle's low air pressure warning signal? A. With the engine off, step on and off the brake pedal to lower the air pressure below 60 C. B. Manually let the air out of your brakes and see if the signal comes on. C. Pump the brakes until the air pressure drops below 30 C. D. Pump the brakes while your vehicle is fully on. The correct answer is here. A. With the engine off, step on and off the brake pedal to lower the air pressure below 60C. Explanation. 
The best way to test the low air pressure warning signal is to turn off the engine while leaving the electrical power on, then step on and off the brake pedal. The low air pressure warning signal should come on when the pressure falls below 60 C. You should never need to get down to 30 C. Question number 114. If you want to know how much air is in your air tanks, you should check the A. Application pressure gauge. B. Low air pressure warning. C. Brake limiting valve. D. Supply pressure gauge. The correct answer is here. D. Supply pressure gauge. Explanation. Your air supply pressure gauge will let you know how much air is currently in your brake systems. Air tanks if you've got a dual air brake system, you'll have a gauge for each half of the system. Question number 115. Slack adjusters. A. Need adjustment if they move less than 1 inch from where the push rod attaches to it. B. Can be adjusted by anyone with a CDL license. C. Make adjustments automatically whenever the truck starts. D. Adjust the position of the S cam. The correct answer is here. D. Adjust the position of the S cam. Explanation. Slack adjusters can be automatic or manual. Manual adjustments should only be done by someone with special training and certification in brake, service and maintenance. A slack adjuster should not move more than one inch from where the push rod attaches to it. Automatic slack adjusters make adjustments whenever the brakes are applied. Question number 116. In a dual air brake system, A. Air tanks are shared between both systems. B. You must designate which system you are using. C. Each system has its own air tanks. The correct answer is here. C. Each system has its own air tanks. Explanation. There are two air brake systems in a dual air brake system. The systems share a set of brake controls, but each system has its own tanks, hoses, and lines. Question number 117. What color are ABS malfunction lamps? A. Orange. B. Green. C. Blue. D. Yellow. The correct answer is here. D. Yellow. Explanation. Vehicles with anti-lock braking systems, ABS, have yellow malfunction lamps. Question number 118. The emergency brake system uses parts of what brake systems to stop the vehicle in case of a brake. System failure? A. The disc brake and parking brake systems. B. The disc brake and emergency brake systems. C. The service brake and emergency brake systems. D. The service brake and parking brake systems. The correct answer is here. D. The service brake and parking brake systems. Explanation. If the brakes fail, the emergency brake can use parts of these two systems to assist in stopping the vehicle. Question number 119. Most heavy duty vehicles use air brake systems. A. Single. 
B. Triple C. Quad D. Dual. The correct answer is here. D. Dual. Explanation. The majority of heavy duty vehicles are equipped with dual air brake systems. Question number 120. To use the stab braking method in an emergency situation, you should A. Apply the brakes about halfway, but keep the wheels rolling. B. Fully apply the brakes, let the wheels lock up, and hold the brake pedal down, keeping the wheels locked until the vehicle stops. C. Apply the emergency brake. D. Apply the brakes completely until the wheels lock up, release the brakes until the wheels start rolling, then repeat the process. The correct answer is here. D. Apply the brakes completely until the wheels lock up, release the brakes until the wheels start rolling, then repeat the process. Explanation. The stab braking method for emergency stops involves fully applying the brakes until they lock up. The brakes are then released until the wheels start rolling, then the process is repeated. Question number 121. On large, heavy vehicles, the parking or emergency brakes must be held on by something that cannot leak away, such as a hydraulic pressure, b air pressure, c spring pressure. The correct answer is here. C. Spring pressure. Explanation. Federal safety regulations require buses and trucks to have parking and emergency brakes that don't rely on compressed air or hydraulic fluid to work, because these can leak away. Hence, the parking and emergency brakes rely on mechanical force such as springs. Question number 122. Avoid using your parking brake if A. You only plan to park for an hour. B. You don't have any wheel shocks. C. You need to leave your vehicle unattended. D. Your brakes are really hot. The correct answer is here. D. Your brakes are really hot. Explanation. Don't use your parking brake if your brakes are too hot. This could damage your brakes. Also, avoid using the parking brake if your brakes are wet in freezing temperatures. They might freeze, leaving the vehicle unable to move. Question number 123. At what measurement is the safety valve usually set to open? A. 250 C. B. 100 C. C. 150 C. D. 200 C. The correct answer is here. C. 150 C. Explanation. The safety valve, which protects the system from excessive pressure, is usually set to open when the system reaches 150 C. Question number 124. When you apply the brake pedal, the brake shoes and linings are pressed against the A. Slack adjuster. B. S cam C brake drum The correct answer is here C brake drum explanation 
In North America, the most common type of foundation brake is the S-cam drum brake. The brake shoes and linings press against the inside of the brake drum, which causes friction to slow the wheel. Question number 125. What is a supply pressure gauge used for? A. To show how much pressure is in the air tanks. B. To show how much pressure you have used in this trip. C. To show how much pressure is going to the brake chambers. The correct answer is here. A. To show how much pressure is in the air tanks. Explanation. The air supply pressure gauge is connected to the air tank, or tanks, and shows how much air pressure is present. Question number 126. How should you check that the spring brakes come on when the air pressure in the system drops below a certain level? A. Park on level ground. Wait for normal air pressure. Release the parking brake. Move the truck forward slowly, and apply the brakes firmly using the brake pedal. B. Park on level ground. Chock the wheels. Release the parking brake when you have enough air pressure. Shut the engine off, and repeatedly press and release the brake pedal. C. Park on a slight incline. Drain off air pressure. Set the parking brakes, and check for movement. The correct answer is here. B. Park on level ground. Chock the wheels. Release the parking brake when you have enough air pressure. Shut the engine off, and repeatedly press and release the brake pedal. Explanation. When doing your final check of your air brake, you should cause your vehicle to have low air pressure, to be sure the warning signal comes on, by turning the engine off, with the wheels chocked, and pushing on and off the brakes to release the air pressure. Once you're sure the low pressure warning is viable, continue doing the same until the spring brakes come on automatically, usually between 2045 C. Question number 127. The modulating control valve allows you to control the A. Front brakes. B. Amount of pressure in the brake system. C. Spring brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Spring brakes. Explanation. In some vehicles the control handle on the dashboard may be used to apply the spring brakes. Gradually. This is called a modulating valve. It is spring loaded so you have a feel for the braking action. The more you move the control lever, the harder the spring brakes come on. They work this way so you can control the spring brakes if the service brakes fail. When parking a vehicle with a modulating control valve, move the lever as far as it will go and hold it in place with the locking device. Question number 128. Air brakes used to make the brakes work. A. Compressed air. B. Hydraulic fluid. C. Natural gas. The correct answer is here. A. Compressed air. Explanation. Air brakes use compressed air to make the brakes work. Question number 129. What does the brake pedal do? A. Exerts force on the slack adjusters by rods and connectors. B. Can be used as a footrest. C. Is the system's main lever. D. Controls the air pressure to operate the brakes.
the correct answer is air. D. Controls the air pressure to operate the brakes. Explanation. You put on the brakes by pushing down the brake pedal, also called the foot valve or treadle valve. Pushing the pedal down harder applies more air pressure. Letting up on the brake pedal reduces the air pressure and releases the brakes. Question number 130. Typically, the air compressor should start pumping at about A. 125C, B. 100C, C. 150C. The correct answer is here. B. 100C. Explanation. Typically, the air compressor will start pumping around 100C and stop at about 125C. Check the manufacturer's specifications for the exact values. Question number 131. If your safe speed is 45 miles per hour and you are traveling at 60 miles per hour on a downgrade, you should apply the brakes until you have slowed to what speed? A. 35 miles per hour. B. 30 miles per hour. C. 45 miles per hour. D. 40 miles per hour. The correct answer is here. D. 40 miles per hour. Explanation. When on a downgrade, you should apply the brakes until you are traveling at 5 miles below your safe speed. Question number 132. What is the first thing you should do if the low air pressure warning comes on? A. Stop. B. Upshift. C. Downshift. The correct answer is here. A. Stop. Explanation. If the low air pressure warning comes on, there may be a leak in the system. Pull over and park your vehicle as soon as possible. If the air pressure drops too low, the spring brakes will come on automatically, which will stop your vehicle, but not necessarily in a safe way. Sudden application of the spring brakes while you're driving might result in a skid. Question number 133. Why are front brake limiting valves not present in newer trucks? A. They are, but they are just automatic. B. The braking systems of newer trucks are incompatible with front brake limiting valves. C. Front brake limiting valves were not reliable and were sometimes responsible for brake failure. D. They were found to actually reduce the stopping power of the truck. The correct answer is here. D. They were found to actually reduce the stopping power of the truck. Explanation. Tests have shown that a front brake limiting valve is not helpful, even in icy conditions. It reduces the stopping power of the vehicle and the likelihood of a front wheel skid from braking has been shown to be very rare. Question number 134. Some vehicles such as buses, have a separate air tank used to a. enable the driver to disengage the parking brakes and continue driving normally b. convert the air brakes into an emergency braking system c. supply air to the braking system if the primary air tanks fail d. release the spring brakes The correct answer is here. D. Release the spring brakes. Explanation. 
Some vehicles have a separate air tank used to release the spring brakes in the case of an emergency. This allows the vehicle to be moved. Careful planning must be used, though, as there is only enough air to move it a short ways.